New test to identify colorectal cancer, intestinal cancer. Is colonoscopy dead? Will it become obsolete? What are the diagnostic options for colorectal cancer? In this video, I'll tell you everything about this. I'll also cover signs, symptoms, exam indications, and when it's truly necessary. So everything about this new test we actually have and about intestinal cancer. Videos are going viral online about this new stool test that can identify up to 90% of colorectal cancers. Is this really true? Well, let's examine everything we actually know about it. We know intestinal cancer is the second deadliest cancer worldwide. Only lung cancer ranks higher. Did you know that? In some projections, colorectal cancer might become number one as lung cancer rates decrease with reduced smoking in younger generations. As colorectal cancer tends to increase with deteriorating lifestyle habits, I'll also discuss these risk factors. But what about screening tests? Where can we take action? Let's start by answering your questions from the comments before discussing this new test. How does it work? It's a stool test that can determine your intestinal microbiota, the microorganisms in your gut. This analysis is performed by AI, which can examine details that would be difficult for humans to detect, identifying microbiota patterns. Some types of intestinal cancer alter this microbiota, causing what we call dysbiosis, as opposed to the normal favorable state known as eubiosis. So this test works as follows. The stool sample is analyzed for microbiota using artificial intelligence. And now, uh, will it replace colonoscopy? The answer is no. This test isn't even available yet. So many people are postponing their colonoscopies. Oh, I want to try this new test is something I hear more and more in my office. And the answer is that this makes absolutely no sense, okay? This can actually harm you and could be a very dangerous approach. First point is that this test isn't available yet. It's still in testing phase, okay? Since studies are online and published, people make videos making it seem available, like you can just go to any lab for it. The answer is no, it's not available yet. It's still being tested, okay? That's the first point. The second point is that this test will never replace colonoscopy even when it becomes available, okay? Why won't it replace colonoscopy? The first interesting point here is that for microbiota changes to occur, you must already have established cancer for these changes to be secondary to the cancer, obviously. If you have a polyp that will become cancerous or has a high chance of becoming cancer, it won't show up on this test. So colonoscopy not only diagnoses cancer, but also serves this additional function. If you have a precancerous lesion with a high risk of becoming cancer, colonoscopy allows you to prevent this. You can remove the polyp before it becomes cancer, okay? So under no circumstances will this test replace colonoscopy, understood? Also, colonoscopy shouldn't be delayed until you have warning signs. You shouldn't wait for that, okay? Many people misunderstand this. Oh, I'll do this stool test first, then I'll get a colonoscopy only if results are abnormal. The answer is that's a big mistake, right? I a major medical error. Waiting for symptoms before getting a screening exam, routine checkup, or preventive test, the name says it all, right? It's a test to screen. So what's the indication for colonoscopy? Well, regarding colon cancer, currently three main screening tests are commonly discussed. One of these tests is the fecal occult blood test. This test is also subject to much misinformation. It's a test that has its uses, however. It doesn't replace colonoscopy. Why? How does this fecal occult blood test work? Through a stool sample, they analyze it to check for blood, right? If there's any trace that's not visible to the naked eye, okay? And this blood trace can be caused by various things, right? Hemorrhoids, anal fissures, intestinal diseases that bleed. So this test indicates the presence of blood, but it doesn't replace colonoscopy under any circumstances because it only shows blood presence and many cancers don't bleed or aren't bleeding at the time of testing, some types of intestinal cancer have an intermittent bleeding pattern. What's that? They bleed a little, then stop. So when you take the test after bleeding stops, it shows negative, giving a false sense of security. It can also be very misleading. There are several situations where doctors can be confused. Got it? 
So there are specific indications for this test. It's not for intestinal cancer screening, contrary to what many people say, okay? The screening test is colonoscopy. I'll discuss more about it, its indications and risks you always ask about, but let's continue. The second test I want to highlight is a blood test, a tumor marker called carcinoembryonic antigen or CEA. What is this test and why is it also subject to so much misinformation? This test can show elevated levels in your blood if you have colon cancer, but also in several other situations. Inflammatory bowel diseases, even smoking can increase this marker. So it has many factors that can generate false positives. And some types of cancer don't even increase this tumor marker. Therefore, it's not used for screening. Just like I mentioned about the previous test, this one also doesn't replace colonoscopy. A big mistake I often see. Many patients who don't want a colonoscopy say, no, but I did the tumor marker and occult blood tests and they're negative. Can I skip the colonoscopy? The answer is no, because this test isn't designed for screening as you saw from the flaws I mentioned. But why does it exist, right? That's the question you're probably asking yourself. Why is there a test called intestinal cancer tumor marker that isn't used to identify intestinal cancer? It doesn't make sense. And the answer is this. This test is for monitoring. People who've already had intestinal cancer have confirmation, had surgery, for example, and are under medical care. In these cases, doing serial tests of this tumor marker can help. For example, you had intestinal cancer surgery, removed the cancer, and the test showed 2. Later you test again, it's still 2. Then you do another test and it's 25. Whoa, that's a big increase. So it's a sign something might be wrong. So it's used for follow-up, okay? Let's forget this idea of tumor markers for screening. Screening isn't done with this new test, not with occult blood, not with tumor markers, but with colonoscopy. So who needs to get a colonoscopy? What symptoms should you feel to need a colonoscopy? Answer me, you who are watching this video, and the answer is ideally none. Yes, why? When you have symptoms from colon cancer, the cancer is already established, often at an advanced stage. The colonoscopy exam is done for screening. It can be used in later stages, but it should be done as screening. New protocols, including the US protocol, set the initial screening age at 45. For people with no increased cancer risk, 45 years in general. What's a classic example of increased risk? For example, a first degree relative who had colon cancer at 46. In this case, what's the recommendation? Is it at 45? Would it be before the age your relative had it? The answer is no. 10 years before that family member had cancer. So I have a patient who has a family member who developed cancer at 46 years old. I'll recommend screening when he's 36, right? 10 years before his relative had it. There are genetic syndromes and specific situations where doctors can recommend earlier screening. There's a patient with a type of endocrine cancer, and for this cancer, we researched related genetic mutations and found this patient has a P53 mutation. This isn't crucial for the video, but I'm just noting that this genetic mutation is also linked to the development of colon cancer. In this case, I scheduled an earlier colonoscopy for this patient, okay? But generally, 45 is the recommended age for the population. Some protocols still say 50, but as I mentioned, this age is shifting to 45 as scientific studies have shown benefits to starting screening screenings at 45. So what's the major advantage of colonoscopy? It allows you to remove polyps that could become cancerous, preventing the disease from developing, and it enables early diagnosis before symptoms appear. And what are the symptoms of colon cancer? Many people ask about this. I'll list a few signs here. First, darker stools, which could indicate bleeding there. This ingested blood changes the stool color. So yes, it's a warning sign. Also, blood in the stool. You have to investigate. The most common causes are anal fissures, hemorrhoids, but you can't assume without a detailed exam, okay? Without a medical evaluation, bleeding can also be a sign. The second sign I want to highlight is feeling of incomplete evacuation. This also increases with intestinal cancer, right? You go to the bathroom, evacuate, but feel you can't empty everything. This is also a warning sign. Another warning sign, number three I'll highlight, is thinner stools, called ribbon stools, right? 
there may be an obstruction causing a change in shape. The fourth sign, also very important, is a change in bowel habits like constipation or diarrhea or this alternating pattern, diarrhea one day, constipation the next. That's also a major warning sign. But there could be a blockage there and cancer can also cause imbalances that lead to diarrhea. So changes in bowel patterns. If you used to have a bowel movement daily, but now it's twice a week or three times a day, that's a big red flag that needs thorough investigation. The fifth sign here is weight loss, right? What kind of weight loss? Any weight loss? The answer is no. There's an objective measure that triggers our alert. 10% of body weight in six months or less. That's a major warning sign, okay? Something might be wrong, not just for colon cancer, but for other types too, other conditions, other diseases. In diabetes cases, thyroid diseases can also cause this weight change. If you haven't started dieting or exercising, of course, this change without cause is concerning. The sixth sign I want to highlight here is abdominal pain. Swelling, feeling bloated, possible obstruction plus nausea, vomiting. These intestinal symptoms occur because cancer can produce substances causing this and the obstruction itself can create bloating and abdominal pain. This abdominal pain is typically colicky, though some patients describe it as sharp or stabbing. It's subjective, but usually colicky in nature. Another common question you have is about colonoscopy frequency. Is getting just one colonoscopy in your lifetime enough? The answer is no. The timing varies considerably. Generally, doctors recommend a normal polyp-free colonoscopy every five years. If you have a polyp, this interval may reduce to three years, sometimes two. And in high-risk cancer situations, doctors might recommend yearly screenings. So it's highly variable depending on your situation, exam results, and known risk factors. Is colonoscopy a dangerous procedure? No, it's not a dangerous exam. Why? because it offers clear benefits. Colonoscopies aren't performed randomly. Studies have shown that groups who underwent colonoscopy had reduced mortality rates, so it's an exam that helps, not harms you as many claim. Don't fall victim to misinformation. No stool test exists or will exist soon that can replace colonoscopy for the reasons I explained. On a scale of zero to 10, how would you rate this video? If you give it a 10, I'll make more videos like this. Write in the comments, have you had a colonoscopy before? Was it difficult? Share your experience because it helps others who fear this exam. Your comment could really help someone else. Also mention which city you're watching this video from.